We reached to Arezzo a little before noon and spent more than two hours looking for the renaissance castle that the Venezuelan wire Miguel Otero Silva had bought in that idyllic corner of the Tuscan countryside. It won't be easy to find the castle. I think we're lost. Honey, why don't we take his way? Daddy, how far in the castle? We are tired of traveling. It is not so far. We will arrive soon. Come on, don't waste your time. It was a burning, bustling Sunday in early August and it was not easy to find anyone who knew anything in the street training with tourists. This path is more along each day. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Could you tell us with precision where the castle of Miguel Otero Silva is located? Of course. Go straight ahead this road. Thank you, ma'am. Do you plan to sleep there? No, we are going only for lunch. That's our intention. That's just us well, because the house is haunted. We don't believe in midday phantom. Wow! We are going to meet a goat in the flesh. We arrived at Lux. We have the right light. Your children are so tall. And you are very beautiful, Mercedes. Thanks a lot, Miguel. We didn't have time to see the inside of the castle before sitting down at the table, but there was nothing frightening about its external appearance. And any uneasiness was dissipated by a worry of the entire city from the flower covered terrace where we ate lunch. Many men of lasting genius has been born on that hill. However, none of them was the most renowned native of Arezzo. The greatest of all was Ludovico. Ludovico, the great patron of the arts and of war, who had built this castle of his affliction. He had an immense power but a trap love. I love you so much. You don't know how many that I cry to the moon being for you home. You won't have to be friendly. I love you with all my It was in a moment of hard madness when Ludovico stabbed his lady in the bed where they had just made love. He turned his ferocious fighting dogs on himself and was turned to pace.
After my night, the ghost of Ludovico walked the dark of the house train to find peace in his purgatory of love. After taking a nap, we woke without fur body through the 18 two rooms that had undergone all kinds of the alteration by a succession of owners. But on the top floor we saw a room preserved intact. The time had for going to visit the bedchamber of Ludovico. The moment was magical. There stood the bed, its contrits embroidered in gold threads. The bed spread its prodigious of pesement trees, still stiff with the dry blob of his sacrificed lover. There was the fire place with its icy ashy and its last log turned to stone the armor with its weapon prime and in a gold framed the old portrait of pensive knight painted by some Florentine master who didn't have the gold fortune to survive his time. Did you find the thing of fresh strawberries? If late. What about if we go to see the frescoes by Piero della Francesca in the Church of San Francisco? Of course. Yes, let's go. Oh, what a surprise! When we came back for our suitcases, we found a meal waiting for us. Mom, I finished eating. Can we go to play around the castle? Mm -hmm. We want to see the ghosts. Okay, go and play, children. We were all us. 
Daddy, can you spend the night here, please? Yeah, Daddy, please, please, let's stay here. I think it will be great. Okay, let's decide just one night. See, drink honey. I counted the 12 insomniac strokes of the pendulum clock in the drawing room and I remembered the fearsome warning of the woman tending his. But we were so tired I we soon fell into a dance, unbroken slumber and I woke after seven to a splendid sun shining through the climbing vines at the window. What's all in To see believer in gods in this day and ache. Oh my god. Only then was I shaken by the scent of fresh strawberry. For we were not in the flat floor bedroom where we had fallen asleep the night before, but in the bedchamber of Ludovico, under the sheet soaking with steel garment block of his accused bed. <laughs> 